Good day subscribers, welcome to Off The Cuff YouTube channel. As we have become accustomed to, Joey Razdin will be conducting the interview. Good day Joey. Our guest today ladies and gentlemen is the 2019 PSL goalkeeper of the season. He has won two Nedbank Cups and one MTN8 Cup. He has also been capped 10 times by Bafana Bafana. Please join me in welcoming Ronwin Williams. Ronwin, how are you my guy? Hi, good thanks and you, Jerry. You know me. Check you I think I met you maybe once or twice. Not still a lot. How is how is 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 Dean gone there now by you guys? Yeah, yeah, he just he left. I think last weekend Tuesday he left. Uh, he finally got a uh, uh, a flight, so yeah, he's gone. But oh. that was all because of his missus and starting a new family. Yeah, they, yeah, you know, because they're from that side. Yeah. The the Jewish people. What I was gonna <laughs> say again? <laughs> For those people that don't know, I am speaking to the Bafana Bafana goalkeeper. He's the guy that's keeping Popeye out of the team. Uh, and, and Popeye is a brave man. I play golf with him. But I'm glad he's keeping Popeye out of the team. Popeye, when you watch this, yeah, you must know. Uh, for those people that don't know, he's also from Galvandale. Ronan Williams, tell us a bit about Galvandale Primary School, my bro. And what sports do uh, you play there? Uh, that's, that's one of my fondest memories. I mean... That's where I started to learn everything. That's why I started. I played cricket there, the mini bikers cricket. I played uh, only towards the end, grade seven, I started playing soccer. You know, so we won a few things. It was, it was top, and that's one of the best schools in, in Galvindale, you know. So I'm honored to be associated with them. You grew up in Islop Street, ne? Yep. And I know Elviro is a bit older than you. Did, yeah. did, was 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 Elviro like one of those guys? But you after knew it. <laughs> uh, not so much because he was he was very close to to my family. He was close to my brother. They played. They were like similar age, so they played lots of cricket in the street together. So, no, nah, he was a cool dude. Lekker. So, um, what made you choose soccer instead of cricket? Ooh, that's a nice question. Uh. I was actually, I think in 2004, I was selected to play uh, for the provincials uh, cricket. And at that time, uh, Super Sports selected me for trials, final trials as well. As well. So it was a bit of uh, a big challenge for me. And I sat down, it was, I've always, you know, soccer was always number one. But I was a good cricketer as well, so it was a difficult decision, but uh, one that I had to make, and I chose soccer. And I mean, if a PSL team comes for you, I mean, at that age, I mean, we didn't know anything about PSL oh, at that man. time, you know. So when they selected me, so I was wait. twelve, twelve years old. Okay, so you were twelve years old at that same year. You got selected to represent EP or the province team. But and in Super Sport said to you, no, you must come. Who specifically from Super Sport came to you? And and what position did you play? Were you always a goalkeeper? Oh, uh, uh, the guy that selected me is our current MDC, you know, our, our current MDC coach, Godfrey Moswetzer. You know, he came and what uh, made things easier for me is he flew down from Joburg and he came to my house, you know, directly to speak to my parents. You know, so that was amazing and that was something unheard of, you know, coming from the ghetto like myself, you know, so, yeah, it was, he slopes it and then that just made my decision much more easier and he, you know, he promised, you know, he gave my, my parents his word that he would look after me and he would make sure that things go well for me and till this day, you know, we're still close and till this day, you know, he honoured his word. Now, obviously, there was an opportunity and you took that opportunity and and, our, and lots of guys from Galvindale seem like they take the opportunity seems like they they um 
get this opportunity and they make the best of this opportunity. And I always, I'm trying to figure out what is that in Galvandale and the people around that makes the guys take these opportunities. Yeah, obviously it's, it's, it's all about where we come from, the background. I mean, I've, I can write a, a full list of people that I know, that I grew up with, that I played soccer with, who are gangsters and who are, who've died, you know. So that's the main thing, you know. You don't want to live that life. You don't want to go that path. And if you get the slight opportunity, you, you grab it with both hands because, you know, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not every day that you see, you know, scouts and people like that coming from Joburg to come to Galvandale you know, to come and look at us and give us this opportunity. And for me, it was easy, you know. I mean, I was always a, a, a sport person and I, that was my, my route that I was going to follow. And once the opportunity came, I made sure I grabbed it. It was, it's either that or you're going to die or you're going to become a gangster and eventually end up dying. So here's my thing. Here's my thing. If, if you didn't, so you, you have a list of guys that's either in jail or that's either um, a, a gangster or that's either dead. Yeah. My thing is, if they, was it because of lack of opportunities or was it their mindset? Ah, it's a bit of both. It's a bit of both. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it's your life. It's what you want to make of it. And I mean, uh, I always tell my son, I, you know, I explain to him, I tell him the things that he has today, I didn't have any of these things you know so it was difficult for me and i didn't let uh you know things that uh set me apart from people here in show but i didn't let that uh, derail what i wanted to achieve you know so and seeing guys you know from my street from my area making it dane clay alviro peterson who grew up in the states yeah. you know in the same street as me seeing yeah. them yeah. make that's it my point. so that's my point so my point is, you said it's a yeah. bit of both. It's a bit mindset and it's a bit opportunity. Yeah. And obviously it's talent. Yeah. But that talent gets identified very early. So Alviros Peterson's talent got identified by certain people within the community. Um, I spoke to Ashley Prince. He's, he's told me about certain guys in the community that um, identified that talent. Um, and also your mindset. Now, and I, I can see, how old is your light now? Uh, he's seven. How old is your son? Seven. He's oh seven wow! So old. you started early. You started yeah. early because you like twenty-five to. now. Uh, you, you like twenty-five, and then you like is is your is your is your is your light his mother from Gavendale as well? Yes. Oh wow! So that's a quite thing. You see, that's the other thing about the guys from Gavendale, former Garnet Kruger, um, Dior, yeah. uh, uh, uh you know, Carolas, they, they, there's always, there's always that, um, uh, how can I say, uh, morals and, and, yeah. and upbringing, <clears throat> that upbringing in terms of you, the way you have to um, be with yourself. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to, to find out. What is that? Like even Russell Domingo, he's like the, the national coach now. Yeah. What is that? What, what can you say that is? No, it's, it's it's all in your mind. You know, it's the mentality. That's the that's the main thing. I mean, like yeah, I okay. said. Yeah. Okay. So so you I I get it's the mentality. Where does that mentality come from? From the people who's around you. Um, I know. Hero uh, mentioned uh, Cheetah, uh, Roderick Yawood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Up until the, he he yeah. was he was actually one of the guys who who fought for me uh, back in the day. Uh, to play provincials, you know, they didn't select me because I was playing for a small, smaller team, Shatterproof, and he was the one that went out of his way and told them, you know, and told them crap in the board meeting, you know, to take note of this boy, and I mean, up until this day, I'm still very close with, with, with Uncle R, you know, me and his, 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 his son, close friends, so it's all the people that achieve things, you know, and he knew, I mean, Garnet, Alfiro, top guys came out of these hands. So all the input that he gave me, I mean, I obviously I had to take it on. And he was the, the vice chairman of the cricket board there in, in, in PE. So to have him around me staying literally next door, you know, uh, and advising me, obviously I had to take his, because 
he was there, he done it. He, he, I mean, the, 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 the proof is in the pudding, you know, all the guys that, that made it. So obviously I had to, 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 to follow what he said and obviously along the way, find my own way, you know, and see speaking how this of which, thing is. Right, speaking of which, finding your own way, how was it to move from PE as Ah, uh, difficult, difficult. I mean, that was the first. I was yeah. still alive, young, very young. Didn't know anything, you know. And I came here, and, and now I'm staying at an academy with maybe forty other players, and maybe there were three other coloured uh. boys, you know. So Ooh, name, name, I must know it. Let's hear him. Kermit, Kermit Erasmus, my own boy. Oh, Kermit, uh, yeah. Miguel, Miguel Tim that's playing for Maritzburg now. Uh -huh. Yeah, those were, it was them. And then there was Sherwin Aika. He's an Indian, but he thinks uh -huh. he's solid. So <laughs> it was those guys. Wait, and, and then the, wait, before you go any further, Kermit is also from Galvandale, isn't he? No, not Galvan. He's from Acadia. Oh, uh, but he's, he's oh, Acadia. Uh, oh, yeah. so Acadia is that in the Eastern Cape? No, it's in oh, Acadia. It's Yo. No, in P. It's not far. It's like literally from 10 minutes. Yes, literally 10 minutes from me. Yo. You see, there's another guy. Kermit Erasmus, yeah. Dane Plate, Ronan Williams, Gaviru Peters, yeah, Peters Wayne Panyal. We can just name them. People so you come people. here. You come here as a 12 year old. And what, you, I, you still didn't answer me. What position would you have liked to play? Honestly speaking, striker. Honestly speaking, I was a striker. Like when I was playing for Shatterproof, uh, yeah. all the top games, the, the the tough opponents, I would stay in goalkeeper, and the smaller uh, teams, I would play striker. So that uh, went on until okay. until I until I got selected for provincials and trials. So that's when I had to take uh, goalkeeping more serious. So you actually played for two teams your entire life, Shatterproof and Super Sport United. And yep, Bafana, only. obviously. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, just, so just Shatterproof. Loyal. Shatterproof. I'm a very loyal guy. Yeah, I can see that. Most most guys from the Eastern Cape is like that. Um, and then you replaced one of my friends also, um, Rowan Fernandez. What influence did he have on you? The Pora guy. Gee. Well, Gee, the white what? Pora colored guy. <laughs> I mean, people used to call me Rowan Fernandez because our names are, you know, Ron and Rowan. So yeah, 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 yeah. up until this day, people call me Rowan, you know. So I looked up to him, you know, and then a few years down the line, you know, we're playing together, you know. And I was first on the bench for him, uh, substituting for him and then learning so much. You know, he's such an open guy, such a crazy guy. He's, nice he's guy. just a, a free, free, happy spirit, you know. And I mean... When my opportunity came, you know, he backed me, he supported me up until today. You know, whenever we play against his team, he'll always come and we'll have a chat, you know. And when things wasn't going my way, you know, he would speak to me when he was at Pirates. He would always, you know, be there helping and helping me out, you know. So he wasn't in any way jealous. Obviously, he wanted to play, but he knew that here's this young boy coming on the scene and he's doing well, you know. So he knew, you know, that he'd probably have to move on if he still wanted to play, you know, so yeah, it was, it was an amazing, you know, an amazing, uh, so uh, Rowan, yeah, I, I like Rowan, he's a, he's a, he's a very good guy, he's like, yeah, he looks out for, for, you, you said that when you were down, you said that you, when you were going through a tough time, just mention like maybe one, um, of, of those things that you went through, like, like uh, when your light was born, you were young when your light was born. Yeah. No, and that was that was. No, that was and perfect. That actually, that actually humbled me. That actually made me calm down. You know, so I needed that. You know, at that time, imagine I'm 19, 20, 21 years old. You know, and uh, everyone is throwing themselves at me. I'm getting DMs. I'm getting messages. Everyone just wants my blood. You know, and I decided to stick with my girlfriend, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm a loyal guy and we know each other for years, you know, we dated from primary school and 
Um, I mean, she was there with the struggle. So now when things is good for me, you know, I wanted to be there again, you know. So, yeah, it was tough. But the, the most uh, the struggling time for me was after the first three seasons I had was top. I won Young Player of the Season. I was nominated for Goalkeeper of the Season. And then I played for Bafana my first game against Brazil. And Ish. we I remember and we that got smacked, and we got smacked five 0 and yeah, that's when I realized that there's a big difference between losing five 0 against Chiefs and losing five 0 playing for Bafana, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was big for me at that time. I thought, ah, you know, it's just another game, and I mean, mm -hmm. up until today, some people would still walk by and and speak about that, and I mean, it's six years later and people are still speaking about that so every time we would play and maybe we'd lose or things are not going my way and then people would say yes it's because of the brazil game it's because of the brazil game and they kept throwing it in my face and i had to it's either sink or swim you know so i decided you know i'm gonna rise up and push myself work hard and you know use that uh to, to motivate myself and i think i've done that i mean i've been the past year, I've been regular for Bafana, so you know it's about time that people forget about that Brazil game. Now. Yeah, no, actually, you know the thing about it is, in my experience, it's the the failures that makes you better. So yep. in my experience, if you die on stage, you don't like that feeling anymore. So you're gonna yep. work as hard as you can not to get that feeling anymore. So it's a motivating fact. So it's yep. fine. Um, uh, I would never want to forget the, 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 the times I didn't do well. Or I would not yeah. want other guys to forget the times I didn't do well. Because that should be a motivating factor. And going, shit, we have, um, five goals went past me against Brazil. Brazil is like at the time was one of the best teams in the entire world. But yeah. that should be my motivating factor. And yeah. more often than not, people use that as a stumbling block instead of a stepping stone. The yeah. one thing that I can give you a tip, and, and it's mostly all guys from Galvandale squad does that successful. They don't give a shit what people think yes. about them. They just yeah. do their job. As for Prince, um, Alfredo, yeah. God. They don't, as I prove it on the field. Where yeah. does that come from? What, what from do you use? Me, exactly. I've, I mean, in many interviews, I've said, uh, um, I don't. I told them I don't enjoy making mistakes, but sometimes it's good to make a mistake. And then people took it the wrong way. And then I had to explain myself and say, once I make a mistake, I know that I'm going to have to focus more and, you know, focus even till the end and double my efforts. So the mistake I made against Nigeria last year in the AFCON, you know, obviously it's not nice, but if I look now from Nigeria, and I don't think there's been a better goalkeeper than me this season just because of that failure, you know, and yeah. making the fans go down. And I use that, you know, as motivation. And now I know each and every game and each and every second is so important in a match. Things can be going well now. One mistake, you're out. So now it, it opened my mind. And, and I think this has been one of my best seasons, you know, up to date. I, wanna, I want you to speak about Clayton, <laughs> did you and Clayton fight? <laughs> fight? No. How many times did you and Clayton? For the people that don't know, Clayton Daniels is also a brown man. Like, if I have to be in a fight, like in a first fight, and I need a guy <laughs> next to me, I would choose Clayton. Yeah, maybe, maybe years ago. He's, he's changed now. He's, he's much yeah. more mature now. No, he's, he's got a, a new girl now, so... You know, he's much more mature now. He's a big man now. But maybe yeah, a few years ago, ah, we, we've, I mean, we've got each other's backs. We sway each other ugly on the field, but we know it's for the cause of the team, you know, for the betterment of the team. So now we've got each other's backs. Oh, and, and, and Stan Matthews, how's he? Uh, is he still the chairman at Supersport? Yeah, he's the CEO. He's the CEO, yes. He's the CEO, okay. Like, uh... No, he stops. He's like my footballing father. Now, I'm asking, why didn't you go to Verts with Gavin Hunt? Um, no, I'm happy at Supersport. I've always been happy. They've made me, I'm the, I'm like the son, you know, at this team. You know, so, mm. 
So I want to, you see, because I want to get to a point where the people that's watching, how do you get to the point where you trust the people you're working for and the people you're working for trust you? How do you get to that point? I can remember 2010, my brother passed away and that's just the time I signed with the first team. And I don't care about soccer, I wanted to give up. And so Stanley Matthews spoke to me and he flew my parents up. We had a meeting, he said, trust me, Ronan is going to be super sports number one. He's going to be the captain and he's going to win a lot of trophies for this team. And I mean, everything has happened the way he said it. So mm. I trust everything that he tells me and the relationship we, we got, we honest to each other. You'll tell me, Ronan, you're not doing well or this or that, or you overweight or you look a bit heavy, you know, jump on the scale, see, you know, get your fat done and things like that. And I mean, a lot of people are scared to tell professional players that, you know, and he's, I mean, he's open with me. He tells me like it is, you know, because I'm like a son to him, you know, and I mean, he's had my back since you day used one. To go back to Galvindale. Yes, I was there two weeks ago. I was there two weeks ago. Well, that six-day grace period that uh, the government gave us, I was there and I went and done some charity work there back home. Like, uh, so that's speaking of which, so you're in, involved in, in, in lots of charity stuff as well. Um, my thing is how, when and how, do you, oh, so obviously you, you, were, you met Kermit and him there and, and you were at the academy and stuff, but that, that changed. That, uh, and did you go to school first? Did you go to school while you were at the academy? <clears throat> yes, definitely. Back then, that was a, schooling was more important than soccer. So if you failed, they would send you home. They would chase you away from the academy. Mm -hmm. So, but now, but now the academy has changed. It's not the way it used to be. You know, I see a lot of people dropping out of school and they more focus on soccer. And, and I keep telling Stan, I keep telling him, that's not the way to go. You know, because not all... Not, I mean, we had 40, 50 players at the academy and maybe only 10 of us are playing professional. So what is the other 40 doing, you know? So you want to better at the, at the academy, you obviously want to better their lives. So I told him, you know, uh, I don't agree with the fact that most of the players at the academy don't go to school anymore. So he said, yeah, that is a bit of a challenge and this and that. So I said, no, you must sort it out because not all of us are going to make it. Mm. So it's very important. So the people that's yeah. watching is very important. Education is a is a big thing. Now you know I'm a a big Tottenham Hotspur supporter. You uh, you had a trial with Tottenham. Did you did they sign you? Did you have no, a trial? No. What happened there? No, I don't know. We just went there in 2008 because of the link that we had. So the whole team, my team, I think we were the under 17s then went over and we played in a a three team tournament. My four-team tournament, actually, it was ourselves, Tottenham, Albanian from Scotland, and Manchester United. So a lot of the guys that are playing Tottenham now, first team, Ryan Mason, okay, he's had to retire because of the brain uh, yeah, injury yeah, had. Yeah. And Ron Stones and all those players, you know, we played against them. So there was links back then, but like I've said in, in the interviews I've done lately, mm. I would only feel I'm ready now for any challenge. Now, the way that I've learned all my mistakes, learned from it, my mentality mm. is much more stronger now. So if I knew the things I know now, back mm. then, I would have probably gone overseas five years ago. You know, but ah. like they say, it's a learning curve. You learn along the way. And I went on trial at Hanover in Germany. Oh, wow. And That's the Champions League team. Yeah. No, they are... Crap team. Are they a crap they, team? Yeah, yeah, they actually got uh, really great. Yeah. Hey, they were from so, the Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah. They were playing the Bundesliga that year. Yeah. And it was nice. It was it was nice going there, but I know. Honestly speaking, I wasn't ready up until maybe two years ago. Ah, two years ago. So coming back to Calvin Dale and Calvin Prime and stuff. So when you came to the academy. Um, what type of support did you have from where you came from? Oh, it was, it was huge. I mean, I was treated like a star, even though I was just at the academy. Everyone was there the day I left, writing a lot of cards, giving me a, a, a well, 
wishes, good send off. It was, I mean, it was, you know, everyone was just so happy for me to see such a uh, a young boy growing up in front of all of them, always in the street kicking ball, and here he is, you know, his his dreams might be coming true. So everyone was happy for me. So whenever I would go home, you know, they would encourage me. You know, up until this day, you know, they're so proud of me and. It's just so nice, you know, coming from from Galvandale and putting them on the map and keeping them on the map. Because I mean, Dane Clayt has done it. Yeah, Rio van Hirt and Yeah, Viro, all of us, you know. So just yeah, keeping the Rio van Ruin is also from there. Yeah, Rio Ooh. van Hirt and he's a, and a lot of people don't mention him. I mean, out of all of us, I think he was probably the most talented. He's probably the best player. Yo, he played overseas. Yeah, he still, yeah, he was part of that guy. Where? He I, played I, overseas. I, I know. And he, we need to do an interview with him. We need to do an yeah. interview with him as well. Um, and then, so every time you go back, so I, I feel that there's this sense of community because you know that Galvandale in South Galvandale, in that PE area, in that 50 kilometer square meters, they produce the most colored people to represent South Africa and they produced the most colored people to have achieved on world stages and on on local stages. They played winning six championships for the yeah. for um for different teams. Uh, how many yeah. did you win now? Three. Not Super not Super. not the championship, but I've got uh, no, I've got six. I won six uh cups. Cups, you see, right, six yeah. cups. Then you have like yeah, Vero and and uh, yeah, uh, and and Ashwell Prince. Then you have Pani Wayne Paniel. He's also the guys that does on the world stage. Is there yeah. something in the water there in Galvandale? Is there something there? In, 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 I don't know what it is, man. Because I'm trying to figure this out. And there's one thing you guys all have in common is that you have this moral standing on how you should be as a human being yeah um is it because of the church is it because of the teachers is it because of the community in general what is it no nah, it's it's a it's a combination of everything it's a combination of your parents because you know every sunday it's church you know uh in galvandale it's, it's a close community we all know each other so they know what's going on in my life and I mean, I would bump into a normal lady just walking down and then she would tell me, oh, you're doing us proud. And, you know, I've never seen her before. So it shows that they, they know what is going on. And that little talk that she gives me, you know, it goes a long way. You know, and there's a lot of them that still pray for me. You know, people that I, I hardly even speak to, you know. So we, when I do speak to them, they'll be like, no, I've been praying for you. We watch your games. And I, I mean, to me, that is it's an, it's an amazing feeling, man. Is that community vibe? Is that community even like uh, even the gangsters that I met from Galvandale? It's like nice guys. It's like yeah. oh, this guy is actually a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> and and I want to know. Um, I, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that point. Tell me two things. I think there's two more questions that I want to ask you. So you played over 200 games of Super Sport. And uh, 13 games for Bafana Bafana. What is your, besides the 5 0 and besides the Nigeria, what is your most memorable game that you played for either Super Sport or Bafana Bafana? Um, obviously, my first professional game, you know, for Super Sport, that was the best. I mean, to start off with the clean sheet, you know, and having uh, a good game, you know, that was obviously that set the tone and that told Gavin. Hunt at that time that this boy can play, you know, put him in there. And but I would say the obviously the, the game that stands out is obviously last year, the AFCON when we beat Egypt in Egypt. I mean 80,000 fans, you know, every time we touch the ball, they booing us, playing against probably the best player at that time, uh Salah, you yeah. know, and just to silence them. I mean, I've never heard a stadium that quiet in my life, you know, when Lord scored that goal and when the final whistle went, I mean. That's the best feeling I've ever felt. Yes, yeah, nee, I understand it. That's like going to the next street in when you're from <laughs> Islam Street and you're going to the next street. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, that's the one thing. 
And then the, the, the other question that I wanted to ask you, um, so that's your, your, your one memorable game. Um, yeah. Tell me about um, a guy by the name of Mr. Simon. I, I don't think you'd know him, but you'd because you'd be too young and you wouldn't have had direct in contact with him. But tell me about this Mr. Simon guy. I'm not sure if you're speaking about the same Mr. Simon who's the, the sir at Calvin Hill Primary. That's the only Mr. Simon that, that I can think of now. And he was, uh, he was my cricket coach. I'm not tell sure. Me more. I'm not... Tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we were playing, you know, this normal when you have like a sport day at school. And I never used to play sport at school. I just didn't like it. And uh, we went and we played and we played cricket. And I was smashing the ball all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that's when he came up to me and he was like, please play And I, for the school. And I was like, no. He was like, please, I will fetch you. I will drop you myself at, at home after all the games. And I mean, with the car? Will you come with the car? Yeah. He dropped me with his own personal card home because we would play. Okay, there's a different Mr. Simon. I'm trying to speak about a Mr. Simon that walks around with his dog. Uh, Olaf Gavondel. I think you're too young for that, Mr. Simon. No, I think you're too I'm young not. for that, Mr. Simon. Maybe this Mr. Simon is family of that other Mr. Simon. <laughs> I must actually go do research because I want to do a documentary of, of this um, Mr. Simon. So what's next for you, my guy? Whew. Tough question. Uh, I just to to push myself. I mean, I've won every local cup except the league. That's the main thing. That's where my focus is on now. And with me, with Dean leaving, I'm obviously getting the armband now. So that's a huge motivation, a huge step up. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be much more focused, much more, much more responsibility on my shoulders. So no messing around now and. What better way to, to lift your first league title than, than you being the one lifting it, you know, being the captain. Yeah. So that's, that's what's motivating me now. So that's a good focus. That's a, that's a very good focus. Now, obviously, are you guys training in this? No. COVID? Not, not with the team. It's just it's tough. It, I mean, I feel like a flipping marathon sprint because that's all we're doing now. It's just running, running. And this is the fittest I've been in my life. I promise you, I've never run this much. Every day the team has us doing 5Ks on weekends, it's 8Ks and it's, it's crazy, you know, yeah. so, yeah, but I'm enjoying it, it keeps me busy, it keeps me fit, so. Like, and, 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 and the COVID lockdown, 19, it didn't affect you and your fro and your lighty as a family, um, how do you no, feel about actually, that? No, it's, it's, it's done wonders for us, I mean, I'm always on the road, I'm always gone. You know, so just to be at home, you know, and helping him with his schoolwork, helping him with his soccer skills, you know, it's nothing better than your father or your parents helping you. It's, it's the best feeling. Lekker. Rodwan Williams, ladies and gentlemen, probably the future captain of Bafana Bafana as well, and he's going to be the captain of Supersport. It's always a pleasure speaking to guys that's making a huge difference for the, co the communities where they come from. And I bet you, I, when I'm finished with interviewing everybody, I will tell you what is that ingredient that that 50 kilometer square meter of Galvin Bale has. <coughs> thank you so much for joining us, Ronald Williams. And nah, good luck and all the best for the future, my friend. All right, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Good speaking to you. Black Kabuta. Sharp, sharp. Cheers. Black Kabuta. Sharp. Our next guest, ladies and gentlemen, on Off The Cuff YouTube channel is also a goal stopper and she is a Banyana Banyana International. Until next time, goodbye. Audio jungle.